Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Topical Talkology. Hi Theo. Good afternoon, how are you? Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. So we were having a little discussion before we actually started this podcast and there's probably a lot to talk about. I mean, we've had Philip Green in the news, we've had women doing everything in the army that men do so they're allowed to join the SAS... There's this Honduran caravan, you know, all, the, all these Hondurans going to the American border, or the bombs um, being sent to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, all this. And so that threats against Theresa May. Th- th- threats against Theresa May as well. So, a lot to talk about today, and um, let's, get, uh, let's get started. So, which, where do you want to start? Mm. Um, well, I think we, we, we have talked a lot about political correctness, and uh, I listened to a retired army colonel being interviewed on this issue of um, ladies being allowed to do everything that men do in the army. And uh, d- to put it simply, he said it's a complete disaster, political correctness gone crazy. Um, because, he said, they tried it in the Israeli military and it failed miserably. And now they've, they've stopped it again because um, physically women cannot do the same things as men do and and it, on the on the battlefield particularly in the infantry where you go to hand-to-hand combat uh, and you look after each other uh, it it can cause uh, it, it it will affect the team it will not function as a single unit yeah but you know uh, uh, there's an element of that i agree with however a woman's entitled to be able to have the opportunity to be able to reach those standards. Now, I know the standards in the SAS are very, very hard to pass their physical exam to be able to get in there for a start. And um, are there going to be allowances made for them? Or are they going to have a, a lesser, more stringent test? Or, or what? Because if they're capable of actually passing the, uh, the SAS physical if they hold it to the same standard as the men then they should be allowed to have that opportunity because otherwise all women are going to have is once they've reached a a certain glass ceiling they're they're not going to get any further so i I understand there's probably two sides to that argument but everyone has has different roles so women are different physically and they have they have they they get pregnant and give birth i get that but the thing is i mean putting men and women together particularly in the army and they're putting them abroad and you know, you're opening up a whole load of can of worms when it comes to sexual harassment and things like this, as well. And um, let alone any, any uh, bad feelings in the field of war. Well, exactly. And what happens when they, act, if, if you know, if if you have to having a relationship and. It, 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 yeah, I think I think it's a train wreck waiting to happen. And, and also, uh, you know, just being brutally honest, the menstrual cycle as well. It does. It, it, it of course does affect some women more than others. Oh come on, they can get the hormone patch. You, you said it, you said it earlier as well. They can have the hormone patch, but then of course some of them might not want to have the hormone patch. For instance, and having having also an un, unregulated, consistent hormone patch is actually bad for your health. Is it? But but it is. But it is a choice. If that's the career they want to take, they've got to make mm. certain allowances to be able to do that and that is their choice if they don't want to have that choice then um you know they've got to deal with those level of consequences now i don't mind women in the army and i think it's very you know i wanted my daughter to go into cadets when she was younger just so she could actually it, it would instill a little bit of discipline in her but not that i actually wanted her to join the army um however i think um I think it's going to be another experiment that's going to go wrong, but it's going to be so far. But by the time they've gone so far into it, they're going to find it very hard to then drop it all together. As, as uh, I think, as as uh, Jordan Peterson said again, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with equal opportunity. In fact, that should be a given to everyone. Uh, but equal outcome is completely different. And why is it different? Because men and women are different. And just like their basic personalities, i.e., as an example, agreeableness is on the whole different but with significant overlap, then so is physical strength. And therefore, uh, I, I would partially agree that if they can reach the same physical standards as men, then they, they can do the same as them. But of course, there's the whole 
gamut of the psychology, which we've, we've already described as being different in terms of agreeableness and disagreeableness. Yeah, but that, that's, that's also a sliding scale. I mean, there are a lot of disagreeable ladies out there who are very good at their jobs. But then, then, therefore, to be in the army, not only do you have to reach the same standards of physical perfection, you have to, you have to reach the same psychological characteristics and that's the you know meeting those two it would be very difficult and maybe a, rather a, a dangerous thing to do because it would also open up the army to being uh, accused of discriminating again well and that and that's the and that's the whole thing isn't it and that's where political correctness comes in so uh, i think we're going to have to watch that space actually and see what develops mm-hmm. so what do you think about the whole philip green thing then eh? about him being um um, exposed after he attempted well, I think, to uh, muffle I, th- I, th- the media, I muffle. think nobody likes him, uh, and I think that's th- that's key here. The fact is that there's nothing wrong with using the law to actually get the law properly applied, because in any in any allegations, you're innocent until proven guilty. And Me Too has simply conditioned, primed everyone, anchored being the psychological term, to treat any Me Too people as being guilty until proven innocent and therefore he's simply trying to redress the balance um and and of course what happens is some lord who clearly doesn't like him but who apparently has a penchant for the same permatan as philip green does decided to out him in the house of lords on the on the grounds of public interest and people who in the house of lords are immune from prosecution in these instances and because it's a a a public venue then of course it's suddenly open to the public and therefore the media are now not muzzled and of course we all know the media are self-serving lying exaggerating uh pack of hounds in any case okay, don't hold back on that one but, if, but Most, if, mostly i think no, investigative yeah. journalists are a different a bo- yeah, kettle of fish say, if it wasn't for the i think it wasn't for the times then they would never have discovered the whole rotherham sex rings mm. and everything like that and they actually pushed and they pushed the police they, yes, they pushed do. the council to actually take some action and the thing is they actually eventually have to eventually had to do an investigation to to, to just to shut them shut shut them up, and then what happened obviously has been has had this whole domino effect across the whole country in terms Where, of- wherever there is a vested interest with limited accountability you're you 're going to run into heavy biases and and some criminal acts sometimes just like for instance lawyers will tend to recommend cases go because they're going to get paid for it even though they know their client has got hasn't got open hell just like i've seen private doctors keep patients coming longer than they should with being undertreated or indeed in broadmoor i've i've actually seen people being chronically undertreated there to stay there for years because they act as a, as a chronic source of funding for Broadmoor. Broadmoor, by the way, is, is a uh, hospital, but it, it's really for the dangerously, violently, criminally insane. So it's, it, it's run Ian, more like a prison. Ian, oh, what was his name? Ian Brady. Ian Brady was there, wasn't he? Uh, and Peter Sutcliffe. I'm, I'm not sure about Ian Brady, but Peter Sutcliffe was. I've got to say, then you have to sign some sort of non-disclosure agreement before you can share that information. Or they weren't my patients, so that's okay. Oh, okay. Excellent. So, no, but, but you know, when it came to Philip Green, when I actually saw his name come up, actually it didn't really, I, I, I was almost glad, and it may sound a little bit hypocritical, because um, mm-hmm. I think it, it should be down in the court of law first, and so, you know, and, and you are innocent until proven guilty, and once the media get a hold of it, any, sort, any form of um, um, fair judgment actually does go out the window. Remember and they get character, character assassinated in the media. But, you know, when it came to Philip Griggs, I don't particularly like him. Um, he, he's dodgy, and I think it was an opportunity for a few people to exercise a revenge attack on him, really. And I think it was, was it Confucius who said, though? Um, I said, if you're going to enact revenge, you better dig two graves. So there will there'll always be some blowback on things like that, won't there? Well, and, indeed, and, and probably that's what probably happened to Philip Green because he's he's done his fair share of dodgy, you know, dodgy deals and squeezing people and um, you know, inf- you know, using leverage as you know to 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 enforce decisions for himself. And and unless unless Philip Green is totally finished off by this, then then uh, maybe he may try and do the same again. <laughs> Well, absolutely, and the thing is, he was one way of taking him out of the picture. So I don't really necessarily agree with 
what they did, but to who do they did it to? Um, yeah, I've got to say, as I said, I, I sound probably a little bit hypocritical on this, but it's good because I don't like him. Mm. And um, and speaking psychologically, <clears throat> competence will usually achieve you a position in life, but whether people like you is going to determine whether they depose you. Well, likability is a huge factor. I mean, you know, doctors... Um, when they deal with their patients, if the doctor likes their patient, they will treat them better, mm-hmm. and then they'll also treat their kids better. And, um, and whereas, and, and on the flip side of that, if um, if a patient likes the doctor and they've probably done some sort of error or something, chances are they probably won't act on that. Whereas if they don't like the doctor, they'll probably you know drag him through the coals, won't they? That is spot on. And and again. Uh, we talked about in politics they've sh- they've shown that whether someone's voted for depends on on their competence and leadership uh, abilities rather than whether people like them or not um, but whether people well, like them one, whether people like them depends on whether they stay in power so for instance ronald reagan apparently made a, a, a few very serious mistakes but he would go onto tv and own up to them and and say gee i i, I really moved it there i'm really sorry and people would would warm to him because of it but again in monkeys uh uh, they, the leader monkey, the head monkey, cannot stay in power unless the whole tribe like him. And if he's disliked because he's tyrannical, then a couple of others will will uh, bind together and they will depose him. Uh, similarly, similarly in leadership, same thing happens. And of course, the clever thing about religion is that you adore the, your god. You like your God. You can never, ever depose your God. And that's one of the powers of how religion leads. Dictators, for instance, will lead by fear because fear is the the core emotion that humans have and by which they can be manipulated, as as people know. Um, But eventually they will be deposed by their own people if they are tyrannical enough well i wanted to jump in on the ronald reagan thing but you've took the conversation so far no, 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 ronald reagan is fine go ahead uh, no i mean the other thing is when it comes to you know political elections people buy people who are the most marketable and um that's who that's who the parties put forward and it just so happens that theresa may was more marketable at the time to take over as leader not, I think she's particularly good at her job. I think she's actually, I think she's fairly dreadful, actually. But she had a, a, a scare, didn't she? Mm. Well, indeed, and nobody knows the truth of this. So, she, so someone said she should be knifed, I think. Um, and of course, we don't know what the situation is. Was it was it a conservative conspiracy to try and get people to like her and to want her because they feel sorry for her? Um, and similarly, uh, in, a, in America, with those anti-Trump people being sent bombs, who was it, Hillary Clinton, Obama, Robert De Niro? Now, again, it, what is it? Is it, a, is, it, is it Republicans sending them, or is it Democrats sending them trying to make him, it, I him look I, bad? Actually, I, I, suspect, I, I suspect the latter, actually. I think it was the Democrats actually sending them to themselves, and there was no real bomb in there. And... Um, it's just about discrediting the Republican Party or, or, or Republican voters just before the midterms, which are coming up very shortly, I believe. That's it. So, um, it, it, you know, the timing seems very suspect, and there's too many coincidences going on here. And let's face it, the, Democrat, the Democrats have been doing some shocking things. You know, there was the whole Kavanaugh thing, which they manipulated, and they got this woman to... Um, you know, they leaked her documentation, didn't they? So she didn't have any choice but to go to uh, to some sort and, of And just to make hearing. it clear, she actually uh, came out with the allegations in July. That's when she came out. But guess when they were aired to the public? I, I don't know. A week before his A week before. <laughs> inauguration. Is, is, that, is, that, is that what it was? Yeah, and, and, and um, also they were asking some of her friends to corroborate what she what had happened to her um, and they were sort of being forced by the Democratic Party to do that to actually just build up an extra stronger case and they couldn't do it because they weren't there and, and let's face it you know once you've purchased yourself that's it you know in public and um, if they weren't there it wouldn't be very hard to figure out even years later 
whether they had been, you know, whether they had been or not. It, it, you know, because the thing is, there's there's such a you, you can you can tr trace it all the way back, and you can actually probably trace people's movements back to many many years if you actually really work it out. You know, particularly with there's old journals around with people and things like this. So, so and, and Americans love their journals and their yearbooks and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, so that happened. And um, what but else? Then, nevertheless, just to highlight one issue of uh, historical allegations, um, because a lot of barristers are saying that it's really impossible 